Hi everyone, my name is Raina Samuel. Today my colleagues and I would like to talk to you about LG's knock codes and its usability and security. Before I begin, I'd like to thank my co-authors, Philip Markert from Ruhr University Bochum, Adam Aviv from the George Washington University, and my advisor Julian Niemtu for their hard work and support that made this study possible. In order to protect our devices, we usually use some form of authentication that we feel is comfortable and secure. You might be using a pin, or if you're an Android user, you might be using a pattern. These are examples of knowledge-based methods, meaning that the user has to demonstrate some kind of knowledge of the pin or pattern in order to authenticate or unlock their device. Even if you use a biometric method, such as a fingerprint or face ID, you would still need to use a knowledge-based system as well as a backup to this. While you may be used to these methods, there are new ways to unlock your phone, such as LG's knock codes. Introduced in 2014, knock codes require users to select a series of 6 to 10 knocks or taps on a 2x2 two two grid. This pattern is the code that users would recall in order to access their device. These codes can be used with the screen off or on. Based on LG users, we estimate that there are 700,000 to 2.5 million potential knock code users in the US alone. As knock codes have a user base and it is another form of knowledge-based authentication, it's important to consider the following. How secure and usable are knock codes? Our study aims to answer this. We ended up discovering that knock codes offer less security compared to other authentication methods, and that participants find knock codes mostly unusable and insecure in our studies. However, when you use knock codes with a block list, which prevents users from using a common code, the security of knock codes is vastly improved. Overall, participants found knock codes interesting and seemed intrigued by new methods of mobile authentication. To evaluate the security and usability of knock codes, we conducted two online user studies on Amazon Mechanical Turk, a crowdsourcing website where subjects can be recruited for surveys or user studies. We began with a preliminary study with 218 participants that took place on a desktop browser. This study allowed us to refine our main study and develop a block list of the 30 most common knock codes. The main study had 351 participants and was a mobile only study with three treatments, a control, a block list, and a larger grid size. Users had to input and recall their codes based on certain scenarios and then had to answer questions about the security and usability of knock codes. Each participant had to create two knock codes, from which we retrieved 1,138 different knock codes, which were analyzed as we performed both a security and usability analysis on these results. We assigned participants to one of three treatments. The first was a control, which is the standard grid size and implementation by LG, a block list, which is again the standard grid size, but prevented users from inputting a common code. And the third is a large treatment. We use the larger grid size to potentially improve the security of knock codes. We used a two by three grid as it fit the form factor of most mobile devices better compared to other large treatments. We looked into the most common knowledge-based authentication methods among participants. Four digit pins were the most popular one, followed by Android patterns. However, there were users who did use knock codes. While 3% may seem small, and it is, compared to pins and patterns, this is potentially 3% of all smartphone users. When we adjusted for demographics within the US, we found out that there may be as many as 700,000 to 2.5 million users in the US alone. This does not include standalone applications that you can download from Google Play, which allows you to have a knock code regardless of having an LG device. 
Before choosing a knock code, participants had the opportunity to practice using knock codes. They were assigned to two different scenarios where they had to select a knock code for protection. The first scenario was a device unlock, and the second varied between a shopping cart or a banking app. Different scenarios help offer different security contexts and were randomized. Participants were prompted to provide memorable codes as they had to recall their selected codes at the end of the survey. In the end, regardless of the scenario, there were no major differences found. We analyzed frequency statistics to observe different characteristics when choosing knock codes based on treatment. Here, we see the most common code in the control dataset, and it starts in the upper left corner, as is seen in many codes across treatments. This follows a left to right sequence that we call an hourglass shape. The second most common code moves in a clockwise manner or in a circle shape, and the third most common code uses double taps or as we call a circle double tap shape. As we see here regarding block lists, double taps are used quite frequently and possibly as a means of security among participants. In the large treatment, we see more directional patterns with less repetition as users take advantage of the larger grid. However, we will show that more options actually didn't increase the security as the patterns used were less secure. We notice with start frequencies and knock codes that there is a strong tendency for codes to begin in the upper left corner. This is probably due to the left to right nature of the English language since our participants were recruited in the United States. The least common starting points were in the lower right corner and in the larger treatment, the middle row was not used as often. The end frequencies have much more subtle differences between treatments as there are more diverse ending locations used by participants. Determining frequency statistics is extremely helpful when developing our threat models to predict and guess possible knock codes. We used two threat models in our security analysis. The first is a perfect knowledge attacker. Here, the attacker knows and has the complete knowledge of the frequency order of knock codes in the set of codes attempting to guess, making one guess at a time. In this case, the attacker always guesses the most frequent knock code then the next frequent knock code, and so on, until all codes are guessed. This provides an upper bound on attack performance because the guess is always successful as the attacker has complete knowledge of the frequency of codes being guessed. However, a simulated attacker must attempt to guess an unknown test set of knock codes based on a known training set. We used a Markov process to build a model from the training data to simulate a guessing attack on the test set. Without full knowledge of the test set, each guess may not be successful, that is matching none of the codes in the test set, and thus this provides a more realistic security estimation. With the perfect knowledge attacker, we used two guessability metrics. The first was an online model where the attacker has a limited number of attempts. We use a beta success rate that measures what fraction of codes would be guessed if the attackers only had a certain number of beta guesses. We see here how we have a high success rate for both the control and large treatments. In other words, more than half the codes are guessed within just 30 attempts. And this is greatly decreased when we use a block list. The second model we used was an offline model where an attacker has unlimited attempts. We discussed the partial guessing entropy, or alpha guesswork, which estimates the amount of work needed to guess an alpha fraction of the codes. Here, we see block lists increase the work by 1.5 bits compared to other treatments, thus improving the security greatly. In the case of the simulated attacker, we see first that initially the large treatment shows some improvement compared to the control up to the first five guesses. Then the reverse occurs and the large treatment shows no improvement and actually worsens security. 
Comparing the control with the block list, we now see a significant improvement. And with all three treatments, it is clear that overall block lists improve the current deployment, while the large treatment offered little to worse security. This is probably due to the fact that the large treatment provided a false sense of security with a variety of options to participants. Now we will look at usability. Starting with entry time, or the time one takes when one unlocks their phone, we see that knock codes are much, much slower than other standard methods, such as pins and patterns. Seven seconds is terrible and twice as slow as these methods. In addition of a block list, it did not affect the general entry time compared to the other treatments either. Regarding recall rates, the large treatment had the best overall recall rate compared to the other treatments. However, it's important to note that nearly one-eighth of participants in the control and one-fifth of participants in the block list treatments forgot their codes in a small 10-minute survey, which reflects a very poor recall rate among knock codes. And while less than one-tenth of participants in the large treatment forgot their code, these were the least secure codes among the entire study. Additionally, when comparing to other methods, pins and patterns have recall rates of 95% or higher. Overall, users perceived knock codes favorably and found them to be easy, discreet, hard to guess, different, and quick. However, there were certain concerns, such as that they were hard to remember, insecure, not an improvement, and hard to type. Nevertheless, users were very receptive and interested in knock codes, showing that they are open to new authentication schemes. To conclude, we performed the first user study and security analysis of knock codes, and we've come to the conclusion that knock codes offer less security relative to other forms of mobile authentication, Participants in our study found knock codes mostly unusable and insecure, yet using a block list with knock codes improves its security. And participants in general are very open and curious to new methods of mobile authentication. I would like to thank my co-authors for their hard work and support in the study. Thank you all for listening, and feel free to contact us with any questions or insights.